I'd like to switch off my camera. Thank you very much. Um, um, so, kindly if you can introduce your friend. Sorry? Oh, um, okay, sorry. Um, he, okay, you can introduce yourself. Yeah, um, I'm Simon, uh, Ruby on Rails developer, but I'll be doing JavaScript today. Wow. Thank you. Uh, welcome, Simon. We are happy to hear from you and, of course, learn from you and Kate. Okay, okay. Yeah, Kate, thanks for inviting Simon. Yeah, this is a good idea. Yeah. See, you switch off the camera. Okay, and to the audience, in case you have any questions, ideas, suggestions, clarification, kindly remember to... You can type on the chat forum or you can unmute and ask. Yeah, I hope it's going to be a very engaging session. Over to you, Kate and Simon. Uh, okay, so um, today we are going to tackle advanced JavaScript concepts. And we have divided this session into two. So the first session, we are going to share our screen. So uh, we are going to share some slides that we prepared. Um, after we share the slides, uh, okay, when we are sharing the slides, I would request you guys to type in your questions on the chat box so that when we are done tackling the slides, we can answer your questions related to the various topics we would have touched on. Then we will have a short break. I think um, the moderator will um, help us on this one. We'll have a short break and then we'll, when we come back, we will tackle all those topics in some bit of um, depth. Uh, most of these topics, we are only doing um, a bit of introduction because in two hours, really, we can't cover all advanced JavaScript concepts, but we're going to try as much as possible to introduce them in a way that would be easier for you guys to like fully grasp um, the concepts. Also, um, to make this as interactive as possible, we advise you to... Um, put in as much questions on the chat box as possible so we can know where to assist you when, um, in case there's a problem. Yeah, uh, so... Um, we, we also have a... We have prepared something on GitHub. We'll share the link maybe later for anyone who wants references. Yeah, so... We'll share this, the first slides now. A window. Mm, can you guys confirm if you can see my screen? Not yet. Select window on screen. Uh, just one minute. Could you guys see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So, just one moment as we set this up. Okay. So, advanced JavaScript concepts. Um, topics to be discussed. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just read through the slides and um, you guys should just follow along. 
so that you don't get lost. And in case you do, you can just unmute so you can ask your question in between. Um, the following topics will be discussed in the presentation. First thing we will tackle is how JavaScript compiles, optimizes and executes in the browser. And then the second thing we'll talk about is scopes, closure, async patterns, callbacks and promises. The third thing we will talk about is object-oriented programming in JavaScript. Then we will touch a bit on classes and modules. We will also um, we will also uh, do something on the JavaScript syntax, like template literals, multi multi line strings, and um, arrow functions. Um, JavaScript execution context. This is the first thing we, we want to talk about. So this uh, part on the slide is just an introduction. But then again, later on, we are going to see all these concepts in um, some bit of depth. So I'll read the first slide. Execution context is an abstract concept that represents the environment in which JavaScript runs. And um, during the execution concept, context, two things happen. The first thing, passing the code line by line and um, storing the variables and functions into the memory. JavaScript uses JIT, just in time engine compiler to improve performance. We'll also look at the scope. Um, what is the scope? Uh, scope is the accessibility of variables functions and objects in some particular part of your code during runtime. And in scope, we have two scopes. We have local scope, uh, where variables defined inside a function are in the local scope. And the global scope, this is variables defined outside of a function are in the global scope. We will also look at closure. So in a nested group of functions, if I'm going too fast, um, you guys could just unmute and then, yeah. You know. In a nested group of functions, the inner functions have access to the variables and other resources of the parent scope. This is called a lexical scope. A closure is created when an inner function tries to access the scope chain of its outer function. Closures are functions with um, preserved data. Then we also touch on async patterns. Async patterns, <coughs> so, which are basically callbacks and promises, are required to potentially prevent code that takes too long to execute from blocking due to load. This is because JavaScript is a single threaded language at runtime. Code execution is done sequentially line by line. So ASIC patterns are introduced to make execution of the code faster. So we have promises and callbacks as part of the async patterns. Um, promises, this lets asynchronous methods return values like synchronous methods. Instead of immediately returning the final value of the asynchronous method, returns a promise to supply the value at some point in the future. Uh, guys, don't worry if all this is, uh, okay, maybe a bit jumbled up, but we are going to explain that in depth later on in the call. Callbacks. This is a function passed as a parameter to another function. The function is then called whenever as a synchronous operation has completed. Promises versus callbacks. Promises can help chain multiple async together using multiple then operation. Promise callbacks are always called in a strict order. They are placed in the event queue. Error handling is much better in promises. Uses a single catch um, block. Okay. Next, we will touch on uh, object-oriented programming. So OOP has four pillars. Okay, so what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming is a paradigm that uses objects to model real-world things that we want to present inside um, our programs. 
and it has four pillars. The first one is encapsulation, which is grouping of objects, variables, and functions that operate on them. Then we have abstraction, um, which is hiding complexities of an object and showing only essentials. Inheritance, mechanism that allows one to eliminate redundant code. Then we have polymorphism as the final um, pillar of OOP, which is the ability of multiple objects to implement the same functionality. Um, we will also touch on some bits of JavaScript common mistakes that um, make our code um, not as nice. So JavaScript, okay, there are so many mistakes in JavaScript, but we are only going to touch on five major ones. So the first one is use of variable keyword to declare a variable instead of let and const. The second one is accidentally using the assignment operator instead of, of a comparison operator. The third one is confusing addition and concatenation. The fourth one is misplacing semicolon. And the fifth one is undefined is not now. So since we can't cover like the entire advanced JavaScript concepts in like two hours. We have put some references um, where you can just um, go back and like double back on some of the things we're going to talk about today. So this is where we got most of our information. So we, uh, the first one is Mo Mozilla Development Network JavaScript documentation. It has the official, MDN has the official JavaScript documentation. The second one is W3Schools, where you can get exercises. I, I'm sure most of you are like familiar with some of these things. Like um, W3Schools is a very common, um, it's a very common, it's a very common uh, um, platform. That many, yeah, a, a very common resource that many developers used to like learn most of these JavaScript concepts. The third one is a, a YouTube video or a YouTube channel that um, we really found um, helpful when we were preparing um, for this lesson. It's called Namaste JavaScript by Akshay Saini. And then the fourth one is a book. Um, it's a book by Kyle Sim Simpson. You could get his book, um, maybe soft copy or hard copy. Um, anywhere, anywhere, basically anywhere where you buy like um, develop, um, developer books or programming books. The book is called You Don't Know JavaScript Yet. Um, yeah, so that is the end of our slide presentation, but we are going to keep doubling back on the slides so we can know if we have covered most, if not all, of um, the, the stuff. So anyone with a question, a, um, a comment, or anything you want to be addressed, you could use the raise hand feature, or you could, um, OK, fine. Um, is, is anyone viewing the, the tab with the code? Yes. Uh, kindly uh, can you the font size on your VS Code. Oh yeah, oh, the font size. <laughs> yeah, the font size. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, it's font uh, okay. size. <laughs> Uh, the speaker, you are, you are muted. Kindly unmute. Mm. 
Uh, one minute as I try to fix my font situation, it's so small and I am trying to make it as visible as possible. So just one second, I am going to be back with you. Meanwhile, you can make the session as interactive. Just two seconds as I fix that, please. Oh, okay, sure. Do you have any questions? ideas suggestions kindly bring them forward as we wait for the speaker Is the font size okay? Is it better now? Um, not really. Have you partitioned mm. your screen? Oh, okay. Mm. No. It's still small. Yeah, it is still small. Probably you can try to share the entire screen. The, the entire screen, the entire yeah. screen is what I'm doing right now. Oh, okay. <coughs> How mm. about you share the uh, the editor? Oh, let me share. And alone, yeah, you just share the editor. Because on okay. my end, yeah, on my end, I'm seeing the editor and uh -huh. and the, and the browser the browser oh, like you partitioned your screen uh g give me a minute oh, okay sure probably someone else from the call can confirm sarah were you able to view uh the code not really and we can't see the screen now. Oh, okay. So the speaker is going to share this his screen again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys, about that. Meanwhile, no yeah. Meanwhile, you can. I have shared a Google Docs. You can fill the document to confirm your and your attendance. Okay. Can you now see the, the code clearly? Yes, better. Yeah, it's better, yeah? Yeah, it's better. So we'll... someone else from the audience can confirm. No. So, it's better. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, thanks. So uh, we'll start with uh, the first slide, JavaScript execution context. Uh, there's a link in the code. I'll share the code later. The the GitHub repo. But whatever happens is 
every browser uh, has a JavaScript engine. So the role of the JavaScript engine is to take the JavaScript source code and compile it to binary instruction that the CPU can understand. JavaScript code is a high level programming. So it has to be compiled to machine code byte zeros and one so that the browser can understand. JavaScript, like any other programming language, has one stack and a heap storage. Can does anyone know what is a stack and a heap? You you can post it later, I'll explain. A heap is a free memory storage unit where you can store memory in random order. Uh, a heap uses a technique called first in, first out, FIFO. Heap is managed by JavaScript runtime and cleaned up by garbage collection. Garbage collection is helps you to free uh, free memory in the code. Stack uses the last in first out approach, memory st storage. It stores the current function execution context of a program in that when the program is loaded into memory, it, start, it starts execution from the first function call. You must note the term uh, execution context in, in, in this liner and function call, the first function call. Execution context decides which code, code section has access to the function variables and object used in the code. Execution context is divided into two parts. There is the, the function variables and, uh, and objects. During execution context, specific code get passed line by line. I'll, I'll explain this. I've got a demo in the food.js file above. But what does it passes file line by line, then the variable and function are stored in memory. This provides the provides environment for specific code to be executed. So I'll go straight to the code. I've got a simple function here. The first function, buzz, what it does basically, it throws an error, something went wrong. Then there's this function bar on line five that calls the function bars and function foo, this calls the function bar. So whatever I'll do on line 13, I'll just call the function foo. Now watch this happen. Huh? But when I run the code, huh? you'll see uh, here, here, think, you, you can see this, huh? when I, ra I run slide one foo.js at line two, execution will start at bars, then goes down to bar and foo, and throws an error. Have you understood? That's how JavaScript works, basically. It reads the file line by line, after after reading line by line, it executes the first function call. The first function call is the function foo on line 13, but it reads line by line as you go down. So whatever has happened here, when this function foo was called, this is the function call, a foo, it called function bar, function bar called buzz, then buzz through an error. But the, the compiler tells us that it has it has started reading from bars, bar, and foo. The next slide. Wait, before we move on to the next slide, uh, in case anyone is left behind or you do not understand exactly what we are talking about, our question was, how does JavaScript compile and execute in the browser? So we are trying to explain to you how this happens. So JavaScript um, is an interpreted language. This means you do not have to compile the JavaScript source code before sending it to the browser. So 
um, what the lack of this type this, this lack of type system is what makes JavaScript to to run slow. So um, a statically typed language can produce a much efficient machine code because of the information it has um, about the data, like its type and the size. So JavaScript runs slowly because basically it is an interpreted language. It's not compiled. Um, so this first slide is explaining to us the execution context. From when you write your first code line of code to your next line of code to your third line of code, how it gets presented in the browser, what is the process? Now, this is what is being explained in the first slide. In case you didn't get that correctly, you could just go back to Mozilla Develop Developer Network, MDN, and just search. Um, uh, we have, uh, okay, on the GitHub repository, when you go into this code on the first slide, we have left, uh, we have included um, a link there you could go follow that link and then you could learn more about how JavaScript executes in the, um, uh, uh, it, how it optimizes and how it executes in the browser. And uh, to add on that, it's for better understanding, it's good to go study about heap and, uh, and stack. It's like good technology. Let's move on to slide two. S slide two was about scope. So there's sc scope. Scope is actually the context. Scope is equals to context. And in JavaScript, we have got global scope and local scope. Global scope is- uh, A question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Uh, a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is something you have done on the bar and the foo, foo, foo and bar what? Yeah, yeah. These um, are. What has happened? Uh, so, there's a function you have called. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see like three functions. Yeah. And then you you exec executing one function, the last one. Yeah. So. What, so what is the process that, that it has gone there? So the process when, there. when I execute mm -hmm. when I execute this function, <coughs> when I execute the function at line 13, you, you, you can see the, 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 the results on my terminal. It throws a new error, something went wrong went wrong. This is something of uh, of a bug I created on the function buzz just to illustrate this. Eh? Just to illustrate yes. this, this is a bug I created. I, 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 are you understanding? Mm. Hello? So, 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 uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So, so, this, the second function. Uh -huh. It's calling the first function, and then yeah. the third function is calling the second function. Yes, and then yes. You, you exec execute. I'm oh, okay. executing only the function foo, just to illustrate how how JavaScript goes from line to line. But okay. do, do, do you get the point? Hello. Yes, but you're the one who have uh, created that error message. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one who created the bug actually. The, 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 the okay. bug was to illustrate this pointer. Okay. Is it clear? Any, anyone with a question about, about this? Anyone else or can I move? Yes, you can move on. Uh, on slide two, uh, I was talking about scope. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share the, the, the GitHub repository later. So scope is a uh, context. And uh, in JavaScript, you have got global scope and local scope. So glo global scope 
is the document, the document, the DOM, basically, is the global scope. When you start writing JavaScript in the document, you're reading the global scope. Variables inside the global scope can be accessed and altered in any other scope. You will see that later in the example called local scope. Variable inside a function in local scope, and they have different scope for every call of that function. Variables having the same name can be used in different function. This is because those variables are bound to their respective functions. You have to really understand that, that variables, you can reuse variable names in JavaScript, but make sure they are bound to their respective functions. It, each, each function in JavaScript has, has its own local scope. So I'll go straight to the code example. I'll start with the, We'll start with the global scope. Huh? So here I've got a variable name called ad advanced JavaScript. Then I'll console log this uh, and go to a function log name. Not here, I've not, I've, I've not declared another variable. And then I'll, I'll execute this function log name. Huh? Now I'll seal my terminal, the, the results. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. So whatever will happen here, whatever will happen here, let me define. Yeah, whatever will happen here is that uh, JavaScript will first go to line three. There's a variable name called advanced JavaScript. Then on line five, execute this and, and logs it. And we see the results down here. Then goes into the function log name. We, we are talking about global scope here. So the name variable will be accessed inside the function log name. And we can call the function log name and still get to see the advanced JavaScript stored in the variable name. Is that clear? Before I move to local scope. Okay, before we move to the, before we move on, I have shared the GitHub repository. It's on the chat box. So, if you want to, if you, if you, you can feel free to click onto the link that I have shared. So you could follow along from your own end um, so you can see the code for, uh, but, um, you can just see the code as we move along. Uh, any, any questions regarding this? Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kindly repeat that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, explanation. You uh, You've you've uh, you've created a variable, yeah, which is advanced JS. Yes, yes. And then you've console logged it on line five. Yeah. And the output was advanced JS. Yes. Then you've created another function which is log name. Yeah, yeah. And if you console log it, the the variable. I've, I've console log it, provide, gi giving it a parameter name that is on our global scope. Okay. Remember, we, we said functions uh, have got their own local scope, but global scope is in the DOM, like in the whole document. So it can be accessed even in the function. <coughs> That's why on line 12, when we get to log the name, it also prints advanced JavaScript. Okay. Is your question answered? Yes, I think I've understood. You've understood? Yes. We, we can move to the next. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. 
so we'll move on to local scope so in our local scope uh we will have nothing to execute here but if you read the comments we will see we'll start by line one where we have our global scope global scope is on the document huh? then the function some some function will have its context will have a local scope then the function some other function will contain a local scope just not with the slide that uh, local scope are bound to their respective function that is the key a local scope are bound to their respective function and uh, in ES6, the new JavaScript, we have let and const. Let and const are bound to their respective function. They, by default, they, they'll give you like the local scope. Any question regarding local scope? Any question before we move on to the next slide? So as a summary, um, the key takeaway for the next slide is you have to know what a scope is. So in layman's language, a scope is the accessibility of a variable, a function, and an object during runtime. Scope is basically where, where to look for things, where you look for the variable, the variables that are referenced. In short, scope is the context of the object. And another takeaway is that we have local and global scope. So before um, ECMA 6, we used to have variable. The, uh, sorry, the keyword var. But now, since the keyword var is um, on the global scope, we'll see this when we, are when we are learning about JavaScript mistakes. It is good practice to use like let and const so any question before we move on to the next slide? Okay. Any, anyone who has not understood to this point? Anyone who has a comment, something to add on just to make the topic stick? Uh, can I move to the next slide? Huh? Yes. Okay, so I'll go ahead to closures. So, closure, <coughs> closure is uh, crucial in JavaScript. You first have to like get a better understanding in closures to move to like a framework. So a uh, closure is a combination of a function bundled together with reference to its surrounding. A closure gives you access to the outer function scope from an inner function. Don't worry about the definition, I'll uh, explain the code. So every closure has three sco scopes, local scope, outer function, and global scope. So straight to the code. So I'll, uh, I'll I'll have a function greet. A function greet will first have this variable name uh, assigned to advanced JavaScript. Then I'll make it return a function that console logs studying then the name. Then I'll call the function greet. Note that when I call the function greet on line eight, nothing is expected to happen. But uh, as I explained before here, like closure is a combination of function bundled together and closed with enclosed with references to its surrounding. So I'll get to 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 be able to see what happens in grid i'll 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 store it in another function called grid later then when i call grid later it will return the function 
uh, it will log the 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 results of the first function grid. It's a bit challenging, but le, 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 let me try to like explain it in a layman's language. Eh? Closure, what closure is, it contains its own scope and uh, scope of their parent and global scope. So, grid later we, we, we'll, we'll be able to access this instance variable name in the grid function and logs it. Just watch. Uh -huh. Give me a minute. Yeah, you see it has executed and uh, logged out studying advanced JavaScript. Uh, anyone who has not understood that? Come up again. Uh, you have not understood. So, uh, where should I start? Like, uh, clearly from what closure is or what? <coughs> so I'll start, with, I'll start with this. First, understand what is closure. Like, try to wrap it in your head that closure are just function with preserved data. When you get to know that closure function with preserved data, that's now the, the fact that it has preserved data will help it access the scope chain its own scope chain and global and the parent scope chain like the, the the grid later function you see we have only assigned grid later here but it will be able to access the function grid now closure grid later provides us with the uh, preserved data of the grid function. That's why when I, I get to call grid later, it logs out advanced JavaScript, studying advanced JavaScript. Uh, you, 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 you can check uh, like in the MDN document, JavaScript MDN document, for further clarifications. Uh, and what to note about closures is closures uh, helps one to surpass its your own scope. Like you can be able to view like local scope and global scope with closures. Uh, any further clarifications? Should I repeat the code? So how do you declare closure? Uh, on line 12. On line 12. On line 12, just <coughs> de declare a variable. Like It's just like creating another function. Actually, you, you just create another function. L let me do this. Let me let me let me try this. Let me try this. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I'll share an important blog post that will explain this. Uh, has anyone seen the magic here? <laughs> we, without this, uh, the second calibrasis, this grid function, I think will not work. You see, without the second calibrasis, the grid function will not work. Uh, it exceeded with 0 0.54 seconds and didn't display something. So in order to, to call the grid function, I'll have to declare a closure, grid later, that will store, it, it's, I will store the results of the grid function. Uh, have I just answered that? Then I'll have to call the grid later as a function. Uh, 
have you wrapped that? It's hard to explain. You just have to get practice and and try to wrap your brain ar around these things. Uh, and in order to get to know about closures, uh, le let me just explain something we missed on our slides. Uh, there's this scope known as lexical scope. Eh? Lexical scope, you see in a nested group of functions, like the inner functions can have access to variables and other resources of the, far, uh, of the parent scope. You see our function here, return function, can access the name that is defined in this global scope. That is uh, le lexical scoping. MDN JavaScript uh, resource has explained it better. I'll, uh, I'll also recommend a blog post, a blog post, uh, think on slide two, this, this blog post here, understand the scope in, uh, in JavaScript. Uh, for further clarification, this, this guy explains what this is, closure in, in details. Uh, any question? Uh, before we move on, any question on closures? Okay, we have not um, we have not fully uh, explained what a closure is because a, um, closure is a, is um, okay. It's the topic is quite deep. So, in as much as we are only doing some introduction, you need to understand uh, closure. But I'll do a quick wrap up on closures before we move to the to the next slide. So in order for you to understand closures, you need to understand lexical scoping. Yeah? So if you want to fully grasp the aspect of closures, then you have to go to Mozilla Develop De Developer Network and read more about lexical closure. Le sorry, lexical scoping. You could also work out the, uh, the code that is included there. Um, but basically, a closure is a combination of functions that are bundled together with references to its surrounding state. A closure gives you access to an outer function scope from the inner function. I think that is a more clear ex explanation. A closure gives you access to an outer function scope from an inner function. So from an, from an inner function, okay, it, from the out, outer function, you could get in, you could you could get information from the inner function. You could call an outer function and get information that is in, inside the local scope, like the inner function. So that is what a closure is. So and closures are created every time a function is created. This might not all be clear right now, but. Um, I think we are on to our next, like uh, maybe in the next sessions, this will be clearer. Or oh, oh, for further for clarification, you, just, you can just uh, like pin, pin uh, on the on the chat box and I'll explain to you and uh, give you resources to to get it clearly. I have one question. Yeah, yeah. What if you just called the first function? Oh, I've, I've, I've done that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Get to see this. Huh? See this. You see, uh, and you, you can read the comments. Uh, the code is given in the comments. Now, watch this. Huh? Watch this happen. Huh? Nothing <coughs> will happen. It has done, exited in 0 0.5 seconds. Nothing will happen. The grid function, you see, of course, the grid function. Nothing happens. So I'll have to come up with a closure that will be able to access the preserved data. Is that clear? Like, is that clear to this point? Then uh, I'll explain to you whatever happens here. Hello? And then a quick one. 
Yeah. There's something you did there. You had two yeah, yeah, yeah. in the Greek yeah. function. Yes, yes. This, this is just a hack I learned. <laughs> so I was just trying out. When, when I add the two calibraces, it surpasses its scope and it calls the function. You see? You see the re results? So what does that? The, 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 the calibraces. Yes, what does that mean? Uh, I'll, I'll say... Is it? At, is it? Is it calling the first? Yeah, it's it's calling the first great function, but this is just a hack I learned. <laughs> I I really don't know how to explain this. It's, a, it's just something I, I I learned, but to explain closures, you see, when 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 I call it normally, when you invoke a function, it it outputs nothing. You see, but when I add the next calibrations, I think it surpasses the scope. I'll get later to this, like at my own personal time. When interested, you can email me and you can talk about this. But closures now does this. Now this is a closure. It helps us access like the preserved data in the grid function. So when I get call greet later, now it outputs this. Uh, just to add on this, before you get to understand closures, like I've said it, just try to know what le le lexical scoping is. Like lexical scoping is the key. It's a lot similar to closures. And uh, with time, things will, will get into hand. <coughs> uh, any question? <laughs> uh, there's a request on the chat box. Yeah. Uh, that you should touch on callback functions. Yeah, uh, that, that is uh, my next slide. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, and someone else is asking which VS Code uh, theme is that? Oh, uh, cool. Uh, the, the VS Code theme, eh? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pin that answer to the ch chat box. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, so uh, we go to callbacks, yeah? So a question, another thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. There's something I've seen in that code. Uh huh. You can can you de declare a variable without uh -huh. using the var let and const const. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a in function. A JavaScript. Uh, yes, you can do that. Oh. It will it will go to like the the global scope. Only global scope it will be able to be accessed in this scope okay you you, you can do this huh? hello uh, uh like you you, you 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 can go to your browser and uh, go to access the 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 dom control shift mm. i and uh once you're in the dome, just try to create a, 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 a variable with, with without declaring declaring it with a var or let or const, and see it will work. It works. It's, okay. It's, it's not it's not something new. Okay, I thought it's okay, I used in Python. Uh, no, it's in JavaScript. JavaScript is also dynamic. So. Can I move to the next slide, please? Hello, we're still here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so so let let, let us move to <coughs> callbacks. Now, callbacks is the heart of uh, 
asynchronous programming. So you first have to understand uh, synchronous, asynchronous programming. Why doing? Why what? What circumstances made us move to synchronous to asynchronous programming? So JavaScript, <coughs> JavaScript is a single threaded, like it executes line uh, line line to line. That is what means by saying single threaded however in most cases the best practice is to embrace limitation and make use of many patterns of writing asynchronous code so as asynchronous code is as explained here it's another pattern that three uh, three patterns of writing asynchronous code is a callback promises and async weight but I'll not touch on async weights. Uh, it's a bit complex. Maybe on your free time, you can go check it. So starting with callbacks. Uh, anyone who wants uh, uh, further clarification on, uh, on synchronous and asynchronous programming, and synchronous pattern, Anyone? Can I move on? Uh, anyone who can tell us the difference between synchronous and asynchronous in programming? Just to see if you have grasped the concept of synchronous patterns. Um, okay. Are we good? So I'll, I'll, I'll start with this simple index.html file. This is a synchronous, synchronous JavaScript, what JavaScript does. So in our body element, we'll have a button that will click me. Then we'll have this JavaScript. Then whatever we do, we'll just select this from MDN, straight from MDN. Uh, we'll select the document and uh, query selector will select this element button uh, not as uh, as i explain you uh, literally i'm explaining synchronous programming here a synchronous pattern it will select the button then store in a const button this const will uh, will fire up the add event listener this is like an a DOM event will have another arrow function click now this is synchronous synchronous pattern is it it runs line by line like this is how javascript reads reads your program when you load it like in memory then it it will alert you you, you clicked me then we will create another element a paragraph and store it in paragraph element. We'll have another text content uh, that will just output these a new, a newly added paragraph. Then we'll append the paragraph element in our body element. So watch these. Uh, uh, the, um, when I open with a uh, Live share now our code. Huh? When I click me, the, the first thing happened as explained above will fire up an alert function that will say you clicked me. When I say okay, then it will add the newly added paragraph. <coughs> Hello, yeah, you cannot see your screen. Clearly. Uh, you cannot see my screen clearly. Yeah. Should I increase their fonts? Yeah. Uh, the code or? Um, is it because the font is small? Yeah, the font Sorry? is small. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, give, give me a minute, give me a minute. 
Uh, zoom, zoom in. Is that okay? That's better. Yes. Yes. So, uh, uh, have, you, have you understood what has happened here? Sarah Negesa, you have um, you have raised your hand. Kindly unmute and then ask your question if you have something to say. Uh, actually, I wasn't raising it. Raised by mistake. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So, any, anyone who who has not understood this simple HTML JavaScript code that explains synchronous in JavaScript. Are, are, we, are we okay to move to asynchronous? Yes. So, asynchronous is as a result of, uh, like, when, when, when we have, in scenarios when our JavaScript files are large, like now when we move to a framework like Node, uh, actually, Node, when we, we now get to have, like, a backend, uh, our, our JavaScript files will, will be large, of course. We are fetching data from the server. So whatever happens is uh, JavaScript, we, we, when we are doing with synchronous, JavaScript will block will block the browser. You, you see, like, when, when you, you fire a function like uh, while, while loop that returns true, it will just block the browser until you, like, get out of it. So the, uh, th this problem is what led to the pattern of asynchronous programming. So asynchronous programming will uh, will try curb this problem. So uh, our first our first was uh, callbacks. Callbacks, whatever callback is, it's a function where the body of the callback contains the code <coughs> that is intended to execute after the asynchronous operation. You first have to understand what is a callback. Callback is, as the name was uh, illustrated, you're just calling back. It calls, it, calls back the, it calls back the body of the function after the asynchronous operation. I've got a simple code here. You see, but this will not execute. I'll just try to, to, to explain. You see, if we, we have a function do nothing that has a value, then we pass in another function. Anyone who has worked with Node, I've not worked with Node before. Node has this in it. It, it, it is an arrow function that will have error and results. So if error, it will handle the error and uh, console log the error. Otherwise, it will just log out the results. That, that, that is a bit tricky, but But let, 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 me, let me try to explain this. Callbacks are functions that are specified as arguments when calling a function, which will start executing code in the background. You see now, our function do nothing has another callback. You see these? These are callback. Now this callback will be executed when this function do nothing is being run. I, I didn't get like a clear snippet to explain this, but when we move forward and uh, get into deeper concepts, maybe when you are given a chance later, I'll try find a, a snippet explaining callbacks in, uh, in more details, but uh, with further research, uh, I, uh, I noted that callbacks are not common. Will uh, the modern frameworks use promises? Now, promises used in Fetch API. Fetch API 
is used to fetch like from a backend. Oh, does anyone know what is an API? API, anyone? A fetch API, a fetch, fetch is a JavaScript function. Huh? Then API in full is application programming interface. Think of it as uh, an interface where application get to, uh, to communicate like the back end and the front end. Then there's this interface. Now that is an API. Think of it like a socket, an electric socket and your charger, your, your, your laptop charger. When you get to plug in your charger now, you, you can charge the laptop. Now that is an API. Now you have to to move it to to programming. So in an API, it, what Promises does, it it is an object representing completion or failure of a synchronous operation. So in our slides, uh, we explained clearly like what this is, maybe, maybe move to this. Uh, now slides, like we have the async pattern here. You see the promises, it lets the asynchronous method return values like synchronous methods Give me a minute, uh, my computer is misbehaving. <sighs> Let the asynchronous method re return value like the synchronous method instead of immediately returning final value of the asynchronous method. This is what callback does. It uh, promises, promises, it just promises your browser that it will get back to you <coughs> with an answer as soon as it can. It has a then and a catch block. Uh, anyone try to write a, a, a function that, that catches a block you see like a switch case statement is what promises does if this is not executed then the, the, the next thing will be executed so uh, a promise will have a then and a, a catch let, let, let me give you an example you see uh, a function do nothing with passing in the parameter value when value execute then value executes handle success here it will console log the value if not it will catch and handle the error message it will console, uh, console log the error message here it's a little bit shaky but uh, when, when you read more about APIs, this is just an introduction. You, you can try to familiarize yourself with this. But it's an easy concept. Just think of it as synchronous and asynchronous patterns. Once you just know about why do we need asynchronous patterns and uh, uh, the, the code will not be difficult to write, that I'm sure of. The concept is what is necessary. Any questions about this? Before we proceed to the questions, um, I would like to ask a question. So, um, why do we need asynchronous patterns? Yeah, why do we need asynchronous patterns? Anyone who was attentive to <laughs> to listen to me? Uh, why do we need asynchronous? Because that is the that is the key that takeaway. That is the key takeaway of um, async patterns. So 
if none of you got that point, I would like to stress on that point. Because if you don't understand why you need async patterns, you won't know how to use promises, you won't know how to use callbacks, you know. So uh, when, we were we were, when we were introducing the topics on the slides, we said that we need async patterns because potentially JavaScript codes take too long to execute because of the load, yeah? So why does JavaScript code take long to execute because of the load? This is because JavaScript is a single threaded language at runtime. And um, also because code, code execution in JavaScript is done sequentially, which is line by line. So why do we introduce async patterns? This is to make um, execution of the code faster. It's, so it's, think, an assignment think of it as this way you see in promises eh? i think part, pattern will just uh, promise and the browser to get back to you like it it it, it keeps the browser pending mm -hmm. until uh, it gets the results and get back to the browser uh, <coughs> any question regarding this um, I can see on the chat box, Fatima, you said to handle a large function. That is very true. That is why we need async patterns. So if you understand that is the reason why we need async patterns, um, it will be easier for you to grasp promises. So uh, a simple assignment uh, before our next session or like before the next session, you could all go and um, just do a little bit of research on maybe promises, nesting, catching, and also something interesting to read about is when promises and tax, tasks collide, what happens when promises and tasks collide. So just to increase your knowledge on ASIC patterns, you need to go and do proper research on um, those topics. Yeah, so, um, so uh, uh, it's already almost 9 30 we can move to the next slide so we don't um, run out of oh, time any 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 like throw a question you can go to uh, the chat box okay fatma has a question what is the difference between dot then and catch and um, dot try and catch so try and catch it's try you, you try an error then you go and catch it but promise Promises does not try and catch. It executes. It is then like after after we 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 we've done nothing here. We execute this. Then, if this is not executed, we, we're going to catch this error. But it works similar, but then not similar. Cause try and catch it. It's like debugging. When you're trying to like, like I've done Ruby before, when you you get an error and you really want to get that that error, you you can try it like get the error then catch it and execute it. It it's shaky. <laughs> it's hard to explain this on words, but technical point of view, it's it's clear. But uh, I'll, I'll find a document and share it. Can I move to the next slide? Yes. yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, on the yes. API part. Yeah, yeah. I also saw something like uh, uh, observables. Uh, you saw something so, like what, what's the difference between between observables and uh, promise? Observables, observables, and like promises. Like fetching APIs. Uh huh. Like fetching APIs, you can use APIs yes. promise or observables. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I think I'll get back to that. I, I, 
I've not read about observables, but I, I, I can figure like, that out uh, before. The methods of fetching uh, the API from the backend uh -huh. part. Uh -huh. uh, there's uh, observables and then uh, and, promise. and, so and promises. Do you know the difference? Mm, clearly, I don't know the difference, mm -hmm. but promises is embraced. That I think I, I read somewhere. Promises is impressed. <laughs> is is but I'll 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 get to you. Uh, I'm going to research like in a few and get to you. Is that okay? Before the session ends, we'll have answered your question on observables. Is, okay. is that okay? So we, we we're moving to ob object oriented. Now this is interesting. <coughs> object oriented uh, ob object oriented, you see in the slides, object oriented programming. What is object oriented programming? Object pro oriented programming is a paradigm. Like we have uh, in in soft in software. <laughs> Design okay. got paradigm. Hello, uh, are you getting me? Yes. Yeah, in software, in software design, we've got para, uh, paradigms. Uh, we've got functional paradigm, procedural, imperative, object-oriented paradigm uses objects to model real world, real world wild things that we want to represent inside our programs. Object-oriented, uh, whatever object-oriented is, it makes you design your code in objects, like wrap everything around you in objects. Like a, a car is an object, a house is an object. Think of it that way. Now we've got four pillars of object-oriented programming. We've got encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. I'm going to explain these four pillars uh, in, in depth. So encapsulation, encapsulation is grouping of object variables and function that operate on them. W when you think about encapsulation, think of it as a, a function like an object has properties and methods. You see, when you create an object, it has properties and methods. Like uh, a car, it has properties, it has color, then it has a method, it moves. So that is encapsulation, like putting properties and, uh, and, uh, and methods in an object that is encapsulation, grouping the object, variables, and function that operate on them. Abstraction is basically hiding complexity of an object and showing only essentials. I think of it in the context of the car, the car object. Like when you see a car, you don't think of how fuel is is uh, mechanically driven to to move the tire you just think of it it's simple as how will this car move it's just the accelerator the brake now we're hiding complexities like the hardest part of of mechanical aspect electrical aspect of the car and exposing only the essentials, what we need to know about this car. It moves, it, it has this color. Then we have in, uh, inheritance. <coughs> inheritance is a mechanism that allows one to eliminate redundant code. Inheritance, like you, maybe you are son, you are father, you're inheriting something from your parents. Now that is an inheritance. Like maybe have the same smile. When we create a, 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 a class you, we just inherit the smile from maybe your mom or your dad. 
polymorphism, as the name suggests, polymorphism. Poly is uh, many. Then morphism is forms. So polymorphism helps you write code in many forms. Anyone who has not understood the four pillars is the... Hello? Um, kindly, can you repeat on abstraction? Abstraction? Yeah. It's hiding the complexity. Like, think of it as a car, you see? When, when you're seated on your car, like, to drive into work... Hello? Think of it like a car. When you're seated on your car driving to work or in a matatu here in Kenya, you don't think about the mechanical fuel aspect of the car. You just know that it moves. You see, so we've hidden the abstract part of it, like how how fuel petrol is connected to the engine, how the engine works, how it's translated to the battery. Now we are abstracting, we're hiding the complexity of an object of our object car and showing only the essentials. I'll, I'll explain this in the code and why we need this. To chime in on that, an illustration on abstraction, like mm -hmm. what abstraction is basically is when you're using maybe a machine or um, any machine that you use on your day-to-day -day life, like maybe your phone or anything, when you're using, let's just say your phone because most of us use our phones, when you're pressing your buttons or touching your screen, are you interested about what happens after you touch your screen, like what the button does inside the phone or something like that? No, you're not. But what abstraction does it? It hides, there's so much that goes on after you have touched your button, but the, the button part is the abstraction part. It's hiding the complex uh, functionality of the phone using that one simple object, like the button. So there's so much that goes on behind, but what is essential? It's only touching of that button. So in object-oriented programming, um, abstraction is used to hide how complex these things happen in the background, but expose, expose only the essential only parts. The essential parts. Is that a bit clearer than before? Yes, that was well elaborated. Okay, thank you. Now, why, why, why do we need encapsulation at first? Encapsulation helps you reduce complexity and increase reusability. Abstraction reduce complexity and uh, isolate impact of change. Like when you're programming in an object-oriented style, you'll you'll have to like create uh, your, your your properties in public, private, or protected scope. Like that is in depth of object-oriented programming. Inheritance it helps you eliminate a redundant code. Then polymorphism, polymorphism it's mainly used to refactor nested loops, nested switch case statements. So I'll head straight to the code, but this will be just a simple. Sorry, yeah. there's a question on okay. the chat okay, box. Okay, okay, uh-huh, you're excused. Okay, yeah, I think she wants to read the question already. My okay. question is, what is redundant code? Or, or, re or re redundant code is repetition. Basically, redundant code um, is um, um, a code that is unnecessary. You know, like um, you, you you're repeating this the same old old thing again and again and again. Yeah. Or code that is never executed, or code that does not have any external effect. Basically, redundant code is code that you can eliminate from your entire program and your program will still run as um, as effectively as possible. So, yeah. Is that clear or do you need further explanation? Very clear. Hello? It's clear. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. 
so uh, 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 I have like a simple a simple function just to explain object oriented so we have this uh, object create new person you see everything in javascript is an object it's wrapped in this 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 and this it represent an object so a first point and enca uh, encapsulation when we, when we have a person object we we having a property that is his or her name and uh, we'll have a function the function is greet we will want to say hi hi to this person uh, everyone understood to that point anyone lost uh, are, are we okay can i move on yes yes so we we we, we you, you see in objects when you create an object you have to access the object we will have to like create an instance of the object now our first instance is this person one so our instance uh instantiation instantiation is like creating an instance of a class a class in other words is a blueprint of an object so we create an instance of the create new person object and passing the parameter mic the the the, the, the uh, there is in in object oriented programming you have to know the difference between uh arguments and parameters but they're all the same so we pass in a parameter mic then we create another instance of person two uh passing the parameter mark so we now call this now we have created an instance of the create new person object now we want to access the name of person one and we want to say hi to person one the same to person two when you get to run our code uh -huh, let, let me see this uh -huh, you see the code has an output here hi mic and uh, hi mark is the point at home is the point clear you you can try this on your local machine it's, it's simple point to note is that we have got our properties here and our methods and we have our object create new person that is object oriented we we writing code in an object oriented design is the point at home any questions <coughs> regarding this Mata Samuel you raised your hand kindly unmute so you can um, sh um share your question okay oh, uh, it was just a uh, error yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, I'm moving on swiftly if there's no question. Uh, advice, advice to, to you guys. Object oriented, understand the pillars. Then once you've understood the pillars, you, you can write code that it's clean, reusable, and effective like in your day-to-day -day life so if there is no questions we'll move to classes as i said earlier a class a class is a blueprint of an object you see a class person it's a blueprint of an object when we create we create classes in javascript we have uh, to say if 
its constructors. Cons uh, anyone who, who knows constructors to explain to us what a constructor is? Uh, before we move, um, I can see on the chat box, Fatma, you said slide five is not on the shared slide. I, I um, could you kindly elaborate what that uh, what that question is? Um, I can see slide five is here, and the entire slide five we are talking about classes. And, uh, uh, slide slide five sorry. is talking about in the GitHub shared. There is no slide five there. Oh, okay. Okay, fine. I am. I uh, will update that in a few minutes. Oh, oh. Let, let me do that. Like right now, uh, in the GitHub. We didn't share slide five. Okay, okay. Let 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 let, let, let me check on that. Uh huh. You can check, think uh, it's it's up to date now. Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you for the observation. Yeah. So, uh, as I was explaining before, like you, you first have to understand, like uh, an an object is a uh, a class is a blueprint of an object and an object an object now to to be able to get an object you have to instantiate a class so we have our person object we have our constructor constructor are simply like getters and setters like when 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 you've done like other programming languages you'll you'll have noted that there's something called getter and center functions where we can be able to get a value and set a value. That is simply what constructor is. And uh, in, in a class, you are either in this context or static context. So a class has a constructor name. Th this name is, at, is assigned to name. And not, not this static. These Java people know about this static static will console log high and greet with, with name this is an instance instance of a person class we will see this once i execute the code so when, when we have when we, we instantiate our person class we get the object person when you call person dot name uh, when we assign mike to person dot name uh, and uh, uh, call uh, call person dot greet with name. Let, let me first comment this. We we we'll, we'll, we'll see the changes. When you call person person object, not this an object, and this an instance instance method like instance method in the in the in the class in the class person so when you call this function cc just uh give me a minute a minute see we have a function hi mike executed wait hi mike executed has anyone tried this on uh, the local machine? Don't focus on this above code, focus on this down result. I'll explain why this happened here. Hi Mike, what, what this has done, when we create an object person, we instantiate the person class. Now when you call the name this, now the object will be person dot name person with lowercase p dot name is equals to name now our name is mike now we come and call hi 
mic. Now when you call the, 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 the object person, when you call the object person on the instance method mic, we, we have the output high mic. Everyone understood that, like the point at home. Before we move on, I was checking out the chat box for any questions that um, you guys have posed there. So Bryson, kindly check out um, an attachment I have included there for um, your question on design patterns. I've sent you a link to a PDF that is going to assist you with that. Because of time, we can't be able to cover um, JavaScript design patterns today. Also, um, Alex, I think Alex, um, sorry, is it Alex or someone? You, you had a question on observables. So um, I've done a little research just uh, about now, and um, observables, I have realized, is a unique object. It's similar to promises, works similar to promises, but observables is not included in the JavaScript language. So because, um, OK, how observables works is just similar to promises. promises. It helps to manage the async code. But it's not part of the JavaScript language. But if you want to include it in your JavaScript language, you use a library called RxJS. Uh, mostly it's used in Angular as an interface to handle a variety of common asynchronous operations. We'll also not be able to cover observables beca because of time. But you could check out observables in the uh, in, um, official JavaScript documentation. Um, we have answered the, co the question on redundant code. So anyone who has a pending question before we go into finalizing, just post it into the chat box so I can handle all your questions before we close the session. Are we, are we good with, with the class.js file? Everyone understood this simple program. So, yes, and? Uh -huh. Hello. Oh, yes, I was saying yes on my end, not unless oh, the oh. Yeah, has a pending issue on the same. So, like, uh, classes, classes, uh, classes will help you when we, we, when we move further to frameworks, like uh, React, OVO, where object-oriented uh, programming is embraced to create like beautiful prog programs and softwares. <coughs> so the 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 next uh, uh, the next uh, the next thing we were to cover was modules. I tried preparing something on modules, but uh, time was up. But just uh, a nutshell, know that modules, uh, modules help you encapsulate uh, methods. That is the key point. Modules is a box that called methods in it. No, so in modules, we'll just have to import a module or include a module into a file. Like say, these are say hi dot js. We, we we export this function say hi. That has a parameter user, and we'll export. We'll expect this function to log hello user, and in our main dot js file, we'll have to import the say hi function from say hi. You see, we we have. Uh, we, we, we are moving down one 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 directory one directory like in our directory then we can access the function say hi and you just pass in the parameter it will output hello Mike uh, any questions 
Yeah, I think uh, we are done. Uh, before before we get done completely, for the next three seconds, I want to touch on the last two slides. JavaScript common mistakes and um, the references. Uh, JavaScript is case sensitive, so which means um, making mistakes is very is very um, Okay, making, making mistake, mistakes in writing JavaScript code is inevitable. So small mistakes like misplacing miscolons, sorry, misplacing semicolons. And then um, uh, I would request um, Wanjiko to create a session where we just um, go over JavaScript syntax, like basic JavaScript syntax, so that it becomes a bit clearer just covering the syntax of um, JavaScript. So we are all um, able to write code in JavaScript. So you could go read about um, assignment operators, like how you accidentally use an assignment operator and a comparison operator. Comparison operator is two equal signs, and an assignment operator is one equal sign. So one common mistake in JavaScript is when you confuse the two, and also, we have learned today about a global scope and um, a local scope. So you, you could make a mistake there when you use the var keyword instead of let and const, or it could be a bit problematic. So in ECMAScript 6, we use the let and the const keyword to avoid um, common JavaScript mistakes. Also confusing addition and co concatenation. Um, addition is about adding numbers, but concatenation is an um, addition of strings. So if you don't indicate that something is a string, um, it won't be interpreted as a string. And if you indicate that it's a number, it also won't be in, it, it won't run as a string. So you have to also know the difference between addition and concatenation. Um, uh, aside from the last, the last, the last slide, we have include references. So, we those are just some of the uh, JavaScript materials that can be helpful when you want to um, learn more about what we have discussed today. We advise that you read the official JavaScript M MDN documents. Yeah, and uh, also. Just try playing around with code. Uh, it will help you like familiarize yourself with deeper concepts. And thank you. Any any, any questions, suggestions? Where did we not do right? Any questions before we close? We were supposed to finish by 10. I had a question, but yeah. okay, we can. I don't know if it's possible for you guys to handle this right now. Can we? Can you touch on prototypal inheritance? Oh, oh, oh I, I, I know that, but <laughs> you can just give it time. Arrange the next session. Uh huh. Uh, maybe you can arrange the next session. I'll gladly do it. Yes. Okay. We'd love to have another session with you guys. We enjoyed preparing for this session. So what what we can do is, um, Wanjiko, you could facilitate yeah. this on the Slack on the Slack channel that we have. I think you could um, open up a conversation about uh, topics that people want Simon and I to discuss next time. We could mm -hmm. set up another time, maybe not the normal hours, just not the normal hours that. The academy meets up to have the sessions. We could have a an extra session, so we you could distribute maybe a question, a question um, form, a question form. People could write down the topics that they want us to discuss. You could give us maybe three days, and we could cover all those topics. Okay, sure. And uh, also your suggestions, like uh, which style should we use, what you didn't like about this, what should we improve, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, have you exhausted everything? Uh, uh, 
today on there we, we've tried we've tried <laughs> we've tried but so far so good like yeah so far so good oh okay i like the fact that you have said that you guys tried and yeah, yeah. that is actually true i bet the audience can testify i mean this session was quite amazing kate thank you so much for tagging along simon okay welcome yeah it was, yeah, it was quite an insightful session uh, we are probably we're going to schedule other sessions on the same and yeah we're going to rotate questionnaires and we shall get back to you but probably okay. if, am i allowed to shoot my shots yeah mm -hmm. uh, probably we can have a session on building an application that uh uses op op uh, oh, uh, uh -huh. what's that uh -huh. like a real world application that utilizes object-oriented programming okay yeah okay all that and any other suggestions oh yeah yeah from the audience bryson do you have something to say okay maybe uh, they should look at uh, design pattern next time design Try patterns and... okay oh uh, design patterns in javascript yeah mm -hmm. we will look at that mm -hmm. okay okay and also look at uh, async programming in detail. Async programming. Yeah. In Ajax. Like, uh, okay, yeah, like uh, in real time. Oh, in real time. Okay, okay. You know, this was just an introduction. You know, you can't learn everything like right now. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any, any other suggestion? Did you guys enjoy this? <laughs> yes, that's very enjoyable. Uh huh. Yes, thumbs up. And yeah, we've got to learn a lot. Yes, it was Thank a you guys for Hello, pardon? Yes, Timothy. Oh, yes, we really enjoyed the session. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so till till next time or final final words. Um, thank you guys for having us. We are officially handing over to Anjiko so she can close the session. Thank you guys. Uh, okay, thank you. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our speakers. Thank you so much for making this session so exciting. I mean enjoyed the session and personally i have learned a lot i hope uh, that applies to the audience as well and of course we are going to have you on many other sessions to come thank you so much for you know taking your time okay. and have a good night everyone. yeah good night and thanks for being an amazing audience to the audience See you <laughs> happy time. happy coding happy coding <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy coding to you, too. So Bye. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Same, guys. Bye.